Hey, good evening, good evening, good evening. Hey, how's everyone doing? Good, 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 good. Good, oh, good to see everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Always a pleasure talking in front of this fine audience, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just going over a quick controversial topic about abortion. Uh, just a quick question for the audience. How does everyone feel about abortions here? Pro-life. Pro-life. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Okay. Well, pro-life to, like, a, like to a degree. Because, you know, like every life is precious, but not everyone can take care of it. That's actually really awesome that you said that. Cause that's pretty much what my presentation is going to be going to. Ooh, okay. Quick story real quick. Everyone's been to New York City, California, or a state where there's homeless people or something like that. And you see that homeless person sitting there with their kids with a sign saying, please, please feed me, I need to support my family, stuff like that. Now, if you really think of that, if you were to go back into that, uh, into their lives and something, maybe talk to them for a little bit, maybe if they didn't have those kids, they would have been able to better financially support their kids way later on in life. But at that choice, they just decided not to have an abortion, and now they're sitting on the street because they couldn't financially support their kid or do anything like that. Now it's putting them back where they wanted to be than they actually wanted to be. So if you really think about it, sometimes maybe abortion is kind of the way the way to go. Now, before I get into my comment or my PowerPoint here, I'm pretty much going to say I'm not here to change anyone's perspective on anything. I'm not here to step on anyone's toes. I know this might have a lot of sore spot, but I'm just here to give you a little insight on some different aspects or inspects of what you may or may not think about abortions. Next slide, please. So quick statistics on uh, abortions, 38% of women, 13 to 44, live in a safe, supportive abortion rights, and 58% don't. And that of those, 24% of the U.S. women will have an abortion by age 45. Pretty much saying over half the states are completely against abortion. And in my personal opinion, I don't think that's completely fair because it should be that own female's decision 100% all the way to let them know if they're able to raise that child. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna go into, and then we're just gonna go into reasons on why I think abortion is kind of why it's necessary. So if we go into sexual assault, there's actually 48% of women by the time they reach age 45 are actually sexually assaulted. 28% of those women who are sexually assaulted end up being impregnated by their abuser um, or however you want to look at it. And if that, how are you going to make it illegal for that female to have an abortion? How should the, that female who ends up having that kid may now resent that kid in a certain aspect or may do or may abuse that kid because now it's being constantly looked at by that person as the person who raised them or whatever it may be. Now I just think it's completely unfair for someone who's been sexually assaulted to be forced to have that kid. And then we go into the drug addiction. Well there's a lot of people who are addicted to heroin, coke, meth, or whatever it may be. Super addicting drugs. Um, and now that baby before it's even born when it's still in the fetus from four to eight weeks, whatever it may be, is already being introduced to a super addictive drug, which is now already increasingly by 51% is now that child is already having a birth defect. It's not 100%, but it's a <coughs> their chance of already having a birth defect is one, like significantly more increased. And now that kid is automatically at a disadvantage compared to everyone else. And that already normal life that he was gonna have, it's no longer there. Now they're gonna have to be taken care of the entire time. And now you're telling me those people who are already addicted to drugs, just because they have a baby, they're going to 100% change the way they look at life? And I don't think so. And that kid's already going to be addicted to drugs in a sense, not necessarily. <coughs> not going to grow up in a good life. And then we go into a young age. Females, females at a young age, let's, let's all be real. We're in a new, new generation where people who lose their virginity is completely at a younger age. People who lose their virginity at age 12, 13, or 14. Now, the chances of them having protected sex, they're probably 50-50. I don't know really know the statistics on that, but I'll tell you, when I lost my virginity, I, wasn't, I didn't use that to protect sex. So Now, the fact that they're 13, 14, 15, you really think the chance of, the chance of them getting pregnant, probably they're the same as whatever age it may be, but if they get pregnant at that age, do you really think they're going to want to have that kid in middle school or high school? And now, even if they did have that kid in middle school or high school, are their parents going to help them take care of it? They're most likely gonna have to drop out of school and then <clears throat> and take care of that kid working two, three, four jobs. Now putting that kid at a financial instability of that household, depending where they're gonna live, if their parents even take care of them. And then we go into the weak body of certain individuals. Some females aren't able to have that natural birth. Some people are allergic or have some kind of 
um, reaction to the anesthetics that are given towards uh, birth if you didn't want to go through a natural birth in itself. So there's a lot of cases to where females who end up going under a natural birth or under the anesthetics itself who have that option, oh, if you have a kid, it's a 50-50 chance you, you are gonna die, we're gonna save the baby. We're gonna save the baby and you're, uh, the mother's gonna die, which is completely unfair. If you're, all, if you're already given that option and being aborted is illegal, how are you gonna take one's life and not the other? And even if you did take the mother's life, you really think the dad's gonna be there or is that baby you're gonna live in an adoption center for the rest of his life? Or until it's 18, until it's a man's baby. <clears throat> uh, just some things to look into. Next slide. This is just a chart from the past 30 years. So in 1980, 1977, there was 30% of abortion rates, and now it's going to 2017, about 30, 35 years later, where it goes into 13.5%. The reason for the significant decrease in abortions is because in 1977, it was highly frowned upon to have abortions in the first place. But nowadays, in 2017, it's not so frowned upon. Is everyone more pro-life? Yeah. But now in 2017, parents are more, or grandparents are more likely to help you out with that kid. Next slide. And now we're just going to go into a small video to help. Just watch this video on these four females who ended up. Uh, and the video, here you go, it's just a minute long. I got a pregnancy test and I was pregnant. Um, basically, I was college bound and uh, not interested in having children. Um, so I knew it was the right decision because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a single mom at 17. So I went and got a pregnancy test at the health center. I was probably, they didn't do a good job of even telling me what my options were. Uh, it was a quick turnaround for me. I didn't think twice about it. I knew exactly what I wanted. After I found out I was pregnant and made the decision to have an abortion, I immediately told a close friend of mine who lived in the city. And then I told my sisters. The last person I told in my family was my grandmother. Everyone that I that I told, I told specifically because I felt that I would be supported by them, and I was. So pretty much, let's go back one. So pretty much that video was just talking about how these four females end up being. Uh, they were actually happy about their abortion because they were so young at age. They were actually to be able to wait till they were older to have that kid because they knew they weren't financially ready to have that kid or anything like that. That's pretty much just what the video is supporting. Um, this was my PowerPoint on uh, abortions. Again, I wasn't here to step on anyone's toes or do anything crazy like that. I just wanted to give you another insight on pro-abortion or anything like that. So again, my name is Sean Sawyer. Appreciate you guys listening. Thank you.